Hi there, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. Another, this is going to be another scrap from your stash process. And uh, I'm just starting with my multicolored scraps here. And I really love this, this patterned paper with all of the arrows. It's from, it's an old Scraptastic paper. And I feel like it would be better for a layout of, with a photo of a person as opposed to an empty bed. And so I am gonna put that aside and maybe use it for my next project. And uh, in the meantime, I'm putting together some patterns here, digging through my multicolored stash of scraps. This I keep my scraps sorted by color in drawers. And I'm just picking anything that's like a soft, either pastel or slightly muted colors. And uh, as you can see, the deeper down I go into my my colorful scraps, the older the papers tend to be. Some of those ones at the very bottom are from my very, very first days of scrapbooking. And uh, I'm going to stick with these ones towards the top here. And I love those stripes. I love those those kind of bars of color as well, but I think those might be a little bit too intense. I feel like this paper here might make a really nice, kind of like to upgrade it and make it have more of a modern feel to it. But then I quickly decided to use a black and white stripe for that instead of using that patterned paper. And while I'm at it, I have my black and white drawer out here and I'm just going to pick out some grays and some blacks and whites. That floral really picks up on her bedspread, which has a kind of like a black and white floral on a gray, like I guess it's gray and white, different shades of gray. I'm going to trim down my photo and I'm actually going to remat it onto a piece of white cardstock because the border around it is just too thin. I printed it up at four by four and it left a slight white border around two of the sides, but none on the other two. So I had to just mat it on white. And I just use that American Crafts white cardstock from my scrap drawer as well. I have a black and white and gray scrap drawer. And I'm just putting these together as I kind of come across the patterns that I think will work. That really dark, the black and white uh, diagonal stripe is from Fancy Pants. This is a My Mind's Eye paper. It is quite old. It's from Miss Caroline is the collection name. That gray and white one that's in the background that's, that's kind of overlapping circles, that one I believe is a Scraptastic paper as well. This one is that Miss Caroline from, uh, from my mind's eye. And now this one is an October afternoon paper and I wanted to use it, but I felt like it was just too much. It, there's, there's just kind of like a lot going on if you're mixing so many different lines with each other. And I felt like this, the flip side of the stripey paper is this uh, coral colored, like the soft pink coral. Uh, polka dots and I thought that that would soften up all of the lines that I had going on otherwise. Now this was something that I didn't think would work but I thought I'd give it a try anyways. I'm cutting out this zigzag, the gray one. I wanted something neutral to add to the page and I'm going to cut out the gray one and I really felt like this might be too much of a horizontal element on this page that it, it, just kind of felt like it would compete a little bit too much with all those stripes in the background. But once I put it on there, it actually gave me exactly the anchoring that I wanted for this layering of all these papers. So I really like how it turned out. So it's a good example of a time when it's worthwhile to try something, even if you're not sure if it will work, just eyeball it. If there's no harm done, if it doesn't work, you just don't put it on the page. Now I'm trying to figure out a background for this. And at first I thought I would go with this beautiful watercolor background paper by Irit Landgraf. It was a, an exclusive paper in a hip kit not too long ago. And uh, I have all of her papers. I'm sort of hoarding them, although I do use them whenever I have a, a, a page that is worthy of them. <laughs> um, but I feel like I'd like something graphical instead. So I put, I pulled out my ledger paper and I quickly found this one. This is another old Scraptastic paper. It was designed by Caitlin Schaefer. And I think it's just perfect. I love the rounded uh, softening that this gives the page. And it I just really, really love it. 
So I'm going to go with that and I'll hang on to that other Erit paper just in case I want to combine it with those arrows that I had picked out for my next page. I'm pretty sure that my next page is going to be about my camper. So I want to outline, but I want to outline just very, very softly. So I took out my gray Chamel pen and I'm going to cut this down because I want it. I, I want that all of the components of this page I want within the boundaries of the page. I don't want anything hanging off of the edges. So I'm just going to, to flip over my background paper and use it as a kind of like a work mat for outlining so that if I go off the page I'm going onto this background. And I love this pen. One of the things that I love about this pen is that it looks like pencil line. And I've always, I love the look of scribbly pencil lines on art journals and other things. And I haven't used this in a scribbly way yet. But one of my reasons for, for loving that this one looks like a pencil is that I could do that at some point in the future. And it's a little bit better than pencil because I think it'll last longer and it won't smudge the way that pencil sometimes will. I'm going to outline the edges of the chevron as well, like the outside edges. I could have outlined the inside edges as well, but I just didn't want to. Oh, I left a little corner there that wasn't quite square. I just didn't want to draw too much attention to the chevron. The chevron has quite a bit of, of impact as it is, so I didn't feel like it needed multiple outlining other than just around the outside edges. And that outlining just kind of pulls all of these papers together. They're all from different collections, different manufacturers. Now, I felt like it needed something that wasn't all this kind of soft muted colors. I needed something white or black and white or something maybe high contrast. And so I'm playing around with a couple of different ideas here. I pulled out my freckled fawn black and white kit and I thought maybe I could use some washi from that. I might use some of these embellishments and wow, I love those letter stickers. We have to get those on this page. So then I also had this little strip that seemed like a scrap from something that I had torn off and I think it's a Felicity Jane paper and then I had this other Felicity Jane paper and that's just uh I don't like that as much as I like the small polka dot and then I have this really small polka dot and I can't decide between the two so it's giving me a nice non-colored like I, I definitely wanted it to be not beige or a light color I wanted it to be black or white or black and white and uh, so both of these polka dots will work quite well. And I'm actually going to try to get them both on this page. And my thought was that this black and white, these black and white elements would go there, but you'll see once I have this finished, it's, I'm going to prefer it on the bottom. So there is a tear in this strip and I don't want to go looking for another, I know I have more of this paper, but I don't really want to go looking for it. So I just attached it so that I wasn't showing the tear. Sorry about my hat in my head coming into frame every once in a while here. And I really like how that looks. I want to make sure, so there you go. I did scooch it around so that it's on the bottom instead of on the top. I think it competes a little bit less with the photo down here. And I like how all these ends layer together, like over on the far left, you've got those strips are all ending in different places and that's the way I want it to be. And I'm just going to attach these top layers to that striped background piece, uh, taking that down a little bit more and then adding the outline. And I'm just lining it all up before I put the photo on. I felt like I wanted a doily here. I wanted something to just soften up this bottom this bottom left hand corner of the photo. And I'm going to audition a couple of different options here. This is a very fabric like doily. I think it's paper, but it really looks like a linen. And uh, I got it from Michael's. It was one of those recollections packages of doilies that you can get. And I really like how that looks. I'm a little bit worried that it's adding too much beige to this page. I didn't want this page to be quite so beige. So I am kind of have three options here. I've got the beige linen one. Oh, I found this clip which was holding together these doilies. These are like acetate doilies that are printed onto a circle of acetate. I think those are from Freckled Fun. So I like the to-do because that kind of fits with the story I'm going to tell today. So I think I'll keep that out. 
and I have three possible doilies. Now I went into my layered embellishments or my dimensional embellishments just to have a look at what I have. And before I even got a chance to look through the cases, I saw these embellishments, which I made on another video quite some time ago. I will link that video in a card right here in the top right hand corner so you can check that out if you didn't see me make these. Uh, these were made from some freckled fawn uh, tissue paper that came in a kit that I actually collaborated with uh, freckled fawn to create. So that was a mixed media kit and it included this beautiful coral and green and brown uh, tissue paper. It was just gorgeous. So those flowers there and see what I'm doing here. I'm just taking a little picture because I can't decide which of those I like. And once I saw them in photo format, it became really clear that I liked this linen one the best. So taking a picture can really help with making those kinds of decisions. Now, I don't know if you really need to be this particular about it, but I actually counted the number of lines that were showing above and below and uh, sorry, not above, but below and on both sides so that I could attach that evenly. And now one thing that I'm noticing here is that the orange strip on the left hand side is actually supposed to go on the right hand side. And the only reason that that matters is that I like that really pale pink strip over on the left hand side because that is where there's going to be a lot of visual interest. I'm going to be layering all of my main embellishments over there. And so I really like that stripe that kind of disappears off into the background. I like that being there. So that's why I took the time to switch that around. Otherwise, that kind of thing doesn't usually bother me. So I would have just left that as it was if it weren't such an important part of making this cluster over here work well. So as you can see, I adhered that that uh, doily so that some of it was showing below and much of it was showing over on the left hand side. And I also wanted to attach my photo. And so I attached the flower to the photo first so that that can be one element that I can figure out where it belongs. And now I love these vellum stickers that came from the Freckled Fawn black and white kit. And it says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And that is great because she's working the whole week. This is a layout about my daughter's uh, volunteer job this week. This is a photo I took this morning of her bed with the sun shining in and her, her bed was empty because she was off getting a shower. I'm going to add some outlining to these leaves to just tie this flower in with the other elements that are on the page and help it look like it belongs. And I'm also going to change out these um, enamel dots that I had put. So this is a handmade embellishment. I hand cut the two leaves and I layered some circles on top of that. It's basically a ruffle that I sewed with my sewing machine and made it into a flower. And like I said, the video for that, it was linked in a card a while ago at the 1010 mark, if you're looking for it in this video. Uh, and I think that you can always hover up in the top right hand corner, the little eye and see all of the videos that I've linked in the in information cards. So I knew I wanted something gray here just to make this embellishment uh, just a little bit less in your face. I felt like the like the orange enamel dots would have worked great on a brighter page, but where this whole page is very, very subtle. And then to have this big, bright, very layered, very um, attention grabbing flower, I think switching out those enamel dots really helps to balance out the background with the foreground. And I do feel as though there's a lot over here on the left hand side and I'm going to need something over on the right side to balance that off a little bit. It feels a little bit like this layout would sink off over to the left. And so I'm thinking a really bold black title over here. And I adore those letter stickers from Freckled Fawn from the black and white kit. And so I'm probably going to incorporate those, although they don't quite look bold enough to me. I need some type of a card to hold both my journaling and my title. So these are pink paisley uh, die cut pieces from the Moonstruck collection. 
and I hadn't sorted those by color yet. I tend to keep especially uh, die cuts that are really go well together, like that are very distinct. I tend to keep separate in their little baggies for a while, not forever, but for a while. And so these are all non-color sorted die cuts. I do sort most of my die cuts by color in these little cases that you're not seeing because I'm not using them here, but you'll see them later on. So then I went into another collection. This is a uh, Pink Paisley Paige Evans collection. I think it's called, is it? It's, I forget what it's called. It is called Oh My Heart. I just looked it up. So that's a beautiful today uh, die cut piece right there. And also the heck yes, that's below it. Those are both from the Pink Paisley. Uh, oh My Heart. No, wait. Yeah, whatever I said a few minutes ago. I think it's called Oh My Heart. <laughs> Ah, short-term memory problems here. Uh, going through my chipboard just to see if I can find something to hold up against that flower. That flower is such a weighty thing. And, and I mean, it's very light in color, but it just adds so much all in one spot that I'm feeling like it might be a little bit too much for this page. So I'm actually experimenting with maybe using something different. But I actually think that adding this banner really helps the flower look like it belongs. If I add the banner and switch out the flower, it looks too flat. And so, I, so I've so i decided to add the banner. The banner adds quite a bit of whimsy to that corner and makes it, like banners are often all crisscrossy and every which way and messy looking. And so I think that that helps with all those layers down there to have a banner tucked in amongst it. And then just to add a little bit of repetition, I felt like that flower was a little bit too different from everything else on the page so I'm adding a little bit of ruffle that I also made at the same time that I made the flowers and so just some plain ruffle it in a small amount right up there I think that looks really great and I chose a bit of ruffle that has less of the brown and more of the coral color because it picks up on the page, the colors that are already on the page. And now I've kind of went overboard with the butterflies here and this would be a very elaborate, I think these butterflies look amazing and they really work well with the page. And if you liked a really elaborate, um, very decorated look, I think they would be great, but I felt like I just wanted them gone. And it might be a matter of preference or even just like not even my own design preference. Like if it was another day, I very well might have decided to leave those butterflies on. But today I just felt like I liked the stripes to be uh, showing more, more of the stripes to be showing and less clutter over them. Now that I have a better sense of how this page is coming together, I'm going to lay out some of these embellishments with actual adhesive and commit. I put dry adhesive on either end of this banner just to keep it in place as the wet adhesive that I used on all the other parts of the banner dries and that will keep it from smooshing around as I'm working on the other elements on the page. And the wet adhesive I used was Tombow Mono Multi. As you see, I just used some of my ATG, which is my dry adhesive that I'm using these days, uh, to glue the ruffle to the top of that heck yes um, journaling piece. And now this postcard, as much as I love it, it feels like if I'm going to put a title on it, the word postcard and all those scrolly things it are going to be too distracting for my title. I want a nice bold black title for this page to balance off with the black that's already layered behind the photo over towards the left, which you can't see right now, I know. So I grabbed my gesso and my nonstick mat and just gave that postcard a little layer. And as you can see, you can still see that it was a postcard, but it is quite a bit less distracting now. It also brightens it up quite a bit because it was quite a yellowed um, off-white like very distressed and old looking and that brightens it up quite a bit and makes it fit more with some of the other elements. And this page is actually a really good example of a page that mixes a bright white along with some more dirty whites and creamy based uh, patterned papers and it can be a little tricky to do that and so I'm going to talk about this title first and then I'll try to remember to come back to that idea. So as I mentioned I wanted to 
come to make the title nice and bold and black and use foam letter stickers for that and because I definitely want to use those really scripty freckled fawn letter stickers I picked two options here that were much more blocky and I want whenever I combine fonts I like to really have them be as different as possible and so the scripty one really balances quite nicely with either of these two blocks now one of them is much more plain but I actually prefer this one this one has serifs on it which is those little dangly things on the tops and bottoms of some of the letters and uh, that makes this this font a, a little bit less plain than the other one but I really like the size of it I think if I had spelled out the word camp with the other letter stickers because the letters are tall and thin it wouldn't have taken up as much space and I wouldn't have had the the nice balance that I get here with the really scripty skinny uh, top and bottom letters and words and then the word camp spread out across the um, the tag that I'm composing this on so I'm having a bit of trouble finding my uh, the dots for my I's and my J's. And by the time I took the photo, I had actually lost the uh, the dot on the I. So I'll have to go back and add that. But I really love how this font looks. I like to turn the E's a little bit for a little bit more whimsy. And I the only thing about this font is I wish that you had the option to choose. Like I wish it came with both upper and lowercase letters for all of them so that you could choose which letters you're going to use for uppercase and which ones you'll have be lowercase. I really like the mix and match look, but in the word leader, for example, it's a little bit too back and forth. It's not exactly one for what, like alternating, but it's pretty close to alternating. And I don't like that look as much as having it look more random, but that's okay. So I'm going to center align these, uh, because uh, it just kind of looks the best. The other idea was to have them kind of justified and aligned along the side of the photo. So that would be left justified. And I just like this look better. I think it really um, is it, like it gives a more playful look, which is what I'm going for here with these very scripty letters. So much fun. Ah, oh, I love them so much. And Freckled Fawn makes those letters in a number of different colors as well. So I was going to just peel back my wax paper and get the letters for camp on there that way, but I decided to just pull them off and reattach them. There is a line under there too that I can see. You might not be able to see it in the video, but it helped me to line those up. And now these don't matter so much if they're perfectly lined up because they look nice and whimsical if they're just a little bit with a bouncing baseline. So I'm really loving how this looks. Now I just need the dot for the J. Where is it? It got lost. So I'm going to steal one from here. There we go. And it turns out it was actually stuck to the inside of two of my fingers. And I found it when I was cleaning up. But now I lost another one. So <laughs> now here's my thought is that I'll push it all over and have the C overlap because that way I don't have as much of a space in front of the J and the L in those two words. And I would have felt too much like that was empty space that needed filling and I really don't want to put anything around this title. I want it to be very um, airy with not much around it. Just that nice white ta um, tag behind it or journaling card or whatever you want to call it. So I, this is uh, taken today and I thought about using my regular roller date stamp and then I thought, wow, what a great opportunity for me to use this ginormous Studio Calico roller date stamp. So it is actually going to take me a while to get this rolled over to the right date because it hurt like a son of a gun to rotate those wheels. I was flabbergasted actually at how much it hurt. It felt like it was going to tear the skin off of my fingers. And so I was trying as hard as I could, but it was pretty difficult. 
I think I will actually cut out some of this, but what I found helpful was to actually use a rag to change it. And now I'm going to, I'm going to kind of like just test it out on a piece of scrap that was already on my on my desk and making sure that I don't have to condition this stamp and I did so the ink was not sticking to it quite as smoothly so I just rubbed that white eraser across the stamp and that made it the ink stick to it a little bit better but in doing all of the, that practice testing it also became clear to me that that color was just a wee bit too dark I went with this smoky gray by Stampin' Up I wish I had an even lighter gray but this is the lightest that I had so smoky gray by Stampin' Up is what I'm using here and so I I stamped August 6th 2018 and then I wanted to change it even like uh to a second date because I wanted to say August 6th 2018 to August 10th 2018 because that's the week that she will be uh doing her thing and now I didn't put a foam mat under my page and I really should have known better especially scrap or stamping over multiple layers it is always a good idea to put a um, foam mat so see how I put one under there you might have missed it because it's on fast forward but there is a, a, a piece of almost like mouse pad uh, for your computer underneath of that and so I did double stamp it and that gave me that kind of shaky look that I kind of like anyways but I decided to double stamp the other date which meant ah tearing my fingers apart to get the date changed back to the sixth again uh, but it, it does get easier as I guess you have to kind of break that stamp in uh, that roller date stamp. So I am just using my gray Chamel pen because I've used gray gray in other places and I wrote out the journaling here. It says Liv was hired as a junior leader at Unicorn Theater Summer Camp and that's just kind of like the the quick and dirty journaling on this but I have more of a story to tell and so I'm going to put it on this line that goes across here and it turns out I'm going to have quite a lot more story to tell. Again, I'm just using my gray pen, so I'll tell you what I wrote here. It says, although it is an unpaid volunteer position, we are proud of her for giving back to the theater that has given her so much opportunity and joy over the years. Although she doesn't like getting her picture taken these, day, um, these days, and that's where I stopped and decided to switch to black marker or black pen. Uh, but I'll just keep on reading my journaling. Uh, this photo of her room early morning while she was showering captures the mood of the first day on the job, up bright and early. And so I decided that this is actually adding quite, it has the potential to add quite a design element to this page if I switched from gray to black. I'm doing this to make it more legible now that I know that my journaling is going to be quite a bit longer than I originally thought. And I'm just journaling off the top of my head, so there was no way that I could know that, right? So I'm going back over it just very carefully trying to mark in exactly the same place, but it's not the end of the world if I don't, because it's such a light gray, it doesn't really matter. So one of so this is a good time for me to talk about that cream and then and bright white so when i combine cream and bright white i do so very carefully i always want to make sure that i don't just have one of either or on my page so i wouldn't want a page that has all cream and then one white element and i wouldn't want a page that has all white and then one cream element and i also don't really even like there to be two and then the rest. I, I like it to be a nice balanced mix of cream and white. And I also like to make sure that the cream and white are mixed in terms of how deep they are on the layout. So for example, if I have that white background paper with the circles on it, I want to make sure that I bring some white up higher in the layout. So that's why um, the heck yes has white and that gray circle pattern paper has white in it. And I also painted over the um, the journaling card that the title is on to make it more white and a little bit less creamy and the banner has a white background on it as well as well as the very top layer of that flower that I the DIY homemade flower also has white on it and the label sticker that's on it also has white and the 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 um I guess the white in the pattern paper of the flower is also a white 
And then that combined with the cream that is elsewhere in the page just kind of balances off nicely. And of course, there's also quite a bit of white in the photo itself. So now the one thing that I don't like about this page is that the although it is not up with all the rest of the journaling. And if I knew that the journaling would end up looking like that, I would have put although it where is and unpaid is. And then, and then the whole thing might have been a little bit longer, but that's okay. Um, so it is what it is. And although I probably could have fixed it, like covered it up or found another piece of paper to cover up, although it or something, what I've decided to do is just go with it and use it as a design element. So I'm going to emphasize the although it and also make sure that it's really, really clear where the journaling starts by putting an arrow that's pointing at the although at the word although, which is the beginning of the, I guess the storytelling part of this, of this page. So we have like a data point, which is, you know, I think about the, the part under the heck yes, like Liv was hired as a junior leader. That's kind of like the, the basic information about this, about this photo. But then the story behind it is the one that curves across the top of the page. So I am adding these really cute doodle bug sprinkles. They're like enamel dots, but they have really sparkly glitter in them and they're silver. So I know I'm combining some gold elements. So the butterfly's gold and then these are silver. And then I have the rose gold to do clip. I'm combining my metals here, which I guess used to be a faux pas. I don't know if there's any rules like that anymore, but I don't mind mixing my metals. And uh, of course they're faux metals, but still. Some of these little doodle bug um, enamel dots do peel apart from their sticky bases and they become see-through if you don't keep the sticky bait. Like the sticky base is a gray color that really helps the dot not be see-through and gives it a little bit more depth. Like it looks more interesting with that gray backing on it. So make sure that you just, it, like if it comes apart like mine did, just use a little bit of glue. That's a little bit disappointing on such a high priced embellishment. Like Doodlebug Design is made in America. So you do pay more for those kinds of embellishments for that brand anyways, uh, which I don't really mind paying a little bit more for something if I know that it wasn't made in China. But um, yeah, I do expect it to be better quality than that. <laughs> uh, but I do love Doodlebug and I generally speaking, their stuff is really, really well made. So not sure what happened with these little sprinkles, but they look really cute. And once you add the glue to them anyways, so this page is really, um, you know, coming together. I sewed that little butterfly in place with some black twine, as you saw. It's just a chipboard butterfly from my butterfly embellishments. And this is how this page looks up close. There's all that journaling. I really love how the rounded journaling softens up the, the edges of this page. And that title is probably one of my favorite titles from a design perspective. Like it's not the most creative use of words, but it is really beautiful title. I love how it looks on the page. It's, it's really nicely balanced too. I like the, I like all the text on this. We've got that roller date stamp. We've got to do, we've got all of my handwriting in two different places and then two different fonts on the title. And then there's also that those days of the weeks in that really scripty font that matches quite well with the junior. It's not an exact match, but it looks quite nice with it. And then of course, some typewriting, both in the word camp and also the happiness and love that's typed on the flower there as an embellishment on a label is also uh, quite nice. So nice to use that idea of repetition in terms of there's two different places where there's scripty font and then there's two different places where there's typewriter font. The three different embellishment clusters, one with the arrow and the button and the enamel dots right by the although to just to show where the journaling starts. And then we've got the large cluster by the flower and then another smaller cluster way over by the title. Uh, I really like how that draws your eye around the page. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to see more videos from me, please subscribe and check out the links that I left you guys below and also check out any of these other videos that I posted recently. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.